what we're trying to do is control nature at its very smallest length scale. A single spin on a single electron on a single atom. Being able to do that here in Australia means that we're right at the forefront. So people from all over the world want to come and join us. How significant are the recent quantum announcements by some of the big tech players, Google and NVIDIA among them? Look, I think the world of quantum is really taking off at the moment. There's a big US program funded by DARPA, which has really just down-selected 18 companies down to 11 uh, to build a fully error-corrected quantum computer by 2033. So it's moving incredibly fast. Our company, Silicon Quantum Computing, has a product in market already in the AI space. And so you're just going to hear lots of news over the next five years. Google's Willow quantum chip breakthrough prompted Tesla's Elon Musk to comment that quantum computing is becoming relevant. Does that mean it's entering the mainstream? I, look, I think it is. For us, it's been very important to get products into the hands of customers. And once you have a customer, we've had customers in tests for over a year now that have been using it for AI. And when they realize it can do something significant for their industry, like reducing training time from weeks to days, then you see it start to take off. So we've had huge demand for that product. We've only released it publicly a few weeks ago, and we're inundated with people that are interested in buying it. Can you explain what the product is? I believe it's a watermelon processor. Well, you are also trying to build a quantum computer, but firstly, right. the watermelon processor, how does it work? What is it? Yeah, so look, if you look at the classical industry, obviously it didn't just suddenly give you a computer that you use on your desk now. It's been a 70-year-long industry, and some of the first products were not computers. In our, in our industry, in silicon quantum computer, we recognize that we've got to look at what's the near term, and combining AI and quantum has given us an opportunity to make this processor called Watermelon. We use basically quantum states that you cannot create classically with any classical computer, and we use it to create higher dimensionality, which we then train deep language models much more effectively than classical computers can. So that's kind of opened up a whole new industry which people thought might exist, but we've actually kind of cracked it. We've got that product in the hand of customers. Is Australia more likely to compete in that way than actually building quantum supercomputers onshore? No, not at all. So I think Australia is quite unique. It got into the field 20 years ago, um, but it, one of the things that, particularly in our company, we recognise that controlling the manufacturing, the future hardware, comes down to the actual manufacturing. If you can control that and do it in a way that no one else can, so we have 0.13 nanometers precision, that's two orders of magnitude smaller than, say, TSMC. If you have that precision, then you can make very high quality qubits, but you can also iterate quickly because you control the manufacturing. Why is it important that that happens onshore in Australia? I think, I think any time mankind has figured out how to manufacture at smaller length scales, new industries have opened up. And so for us, from the very beginning, I knew if you control the manufacturing, you basically control the industry both for AI but for the large-scale error-corrected quantum computer. Governments have been funding progress in this sector, funded a, another company, Cy Quantum, to the tune of more than a billion dollars. Are taxpayers going to have to provide more support to get this sector up and running? Yeah, look, it's a fascinating question. I guess when you've got a new area of deep technology, you're not just making one little product that you can sell easily. And it's a technology that, honestly, Australia, we started 25 years ago. So we've been funded by the Australian Research Council for that period of time. We've got a very strong, deep research base in Australia. Um, but now, to get across the gap of commercialisation, what you're seeing in every country is that governments are funding it. And I think one of the great things is to recognise Australia was one of the first governments to see this. So back in 2015, it announced that it would fund silicon quantum computing. It recognised that we were at a point where we could translate at our universities and they wanted to make sure they got behind us. But it's happening in every, every country now, it's global. Is there a race for capital with artificial intelligence? We've seen huge amounts of money pouring into that sector. Look, again, it's a new technology. So in its own right, quantum is going to have a new functionality that artificial intelligence can't do. So it's a new form of compute. It will sit alongside GPUs and CPUs. Um, but it's got its own industry, so you'll start to see now people are kind of funding this at big time because they recognise it's the next wave of computing. Do you think the two sectors are complementary? Will they work together in some way? Absolutely. So, you know, classical computing, GPUs, QPUs, they will all work together. They do different forms of computing, but fundamentally if you want to have the most powerful, you'll have all three. 
And honestly, the, the key thing, which I hope Australia does quickly, is it gets the QPUs into the hands of those data centres so we don't have to build such big systems. Now, Musk also tweeted recently that quantum computing is best done on the moon, presumably because of its cold temperature. Are quantum computing's many obstacles uh, surmountable? It's taken a long time to get to this point. We're still wondering about the ultimate uh, goal of delivering a supercomputer. Yeah, so if, if you think about it, what we're trying to do is control nature at its very smallest length scale. A single spin on a single electron on a single atom. You know, 20 years ago, there was no way that we knew how to do that. So, so for me, that's lived in a very practical world. We're actually designing and iterating hardware. It's an inevitable process that you have to go through. Um, being able to do that here in Australia means that we're right at the forefront. So people from all over the world want to come and join us. It's a very pragmatic, practical field, and it will keep evolving for the rest of my life and well beyond in the same way that classical did. So again, classical computers didn't just arrive on your desk. You had to build the technology to make them, and that technology just keeps giving back. Quantum is going to be this whole new, many decade long industry, and we're right at the beginning of that. Will it one day be feasible to carry out on the moon? Possibly, but I'm, I'm not planning to go to the moon. <laughs> so I'll be on the ground uh, building processes with customers here. Michelle Simmons, thank you. Thank you.